Six years. Has it really already been that long? Apparently it has. And in some ways it feels like so much longer than that, and in other ways it feels like just yesterday. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, six years ago is really whenever I started this YouTube journey as Serpa Design. Now the channel is older than that and I have videos older than that, but as far as being consistent with the platform, that's whenever it started. And it was all thanks to this terrarium right here. I have a lot to say regarding the progress of this terrarium. A lot has changed in the six years that it's been set up, and this is a kind of weird and special video for me to make because it will be the last one like this. And I'll talk more about that as we go through the video and in future uploads, but it's kind of a weird one for me to make because I have a strange kind of nostalgia going on just because of the time of the year and it's kind of like a everything coming full circle type of thing. But enough on that, let's get into the terrarium. I know it's been a little while since we've done a proper terrarium update, but you know what we gotta do before we do anything else in here. The Serpa Design patented sniff test. <sighs> yep, that's right, it's a good smell. I can tell immediately by looking in here that it's doing well, but I knew that already because of how it smelled. As I've explained before, smell is by far one of the best indicators as to how a terrarium's doing. What you're looking for is something that smells like the outdoors or a forest, and that's exactly how this one smells, so I know it's doing well. On the other hand, if it smells putrid or sour, it's already likely past the point of no return, and you might as well salvage it and start over. I will say though that this usually only happens with newly established systems, say three months or less, and once they get established like this one, you're probably not going to have to worry about that at all. Anyway, to maintain it, I've got a pair of tweezers and curved scissors. The first thing I see that needs addressed is this java moss growing up the glass. Although it looks kind of cool from the top down, it's not really ideal for everyday viewing. As expected, you'll see that the oak leaf creeping fig is also going kind of wild. I think it needs thinned out a little bit so that way we can get better growth. The last thing I can see on an initial inspection is that there are a lot of dead leaves on these anubias. If I peel this one off, you can still see that the mother plants are down there, or at least some shoot of the rhizome, but it's kind of crazy because when I put those Anubias in this to start, which was six years ago, they were already at least 10 years old at that point, so uh, they're pretty old, which is kind of cool, but um, they're not looking quite as hot these days. <laughs> Since I already started pulling out the leaves from them, that's probably the best place to start. Although it may seem counterintuitive, I will be adding these leaves back after I've trimmed things up a little bit. The reason why is that these dead leaves are actually part of how a system like this is successful. They die off, they decompose, and then they put nutrients back into the soil where the plants can then use them again and it creates a nice little loop. I of course view terrarium as an art form, so the way that it looks is pretty important to me, but I am of course mindful of what it takes to keep a system like this running indefinitely. I think I should go and improve some of this visibility now and trim down this moss. When I do this, I like to pull it away from the glass before I actually trim it. It just makes the job a little bit easier. Springtails jumping all over the place as I'm doing this. And then I come back with the scissors and just carefully snip it and pull off the excess. I want to revisit what I said earlier though about this being an art form. As many of you know, that is how I view terrarium. I definitely view it as an art form. And it's just crazy how what I said earlier about how the channel has changed a lot in six years and how this has changed in six years. It's just cool to see my roots, I guess, if you want to put it that way. like. I still have a huge heart for terrariums. I don't do them as much these days unless I can come up with a cool and unique kind of concept. But just these traditional terrariums like this, you know, I kind of built this whole <laughs> Serpa design empire, if you want to put it that way, off of a container that I bought from the thrift store and like $10 worth of materials and stuff. and. 
Here we are six years later. I have just shy of 1.3 million subscribers. I do this for a living and I make <laughs> completely different types of projects now. You know, not that I wasn't making stuff like that back then, but my skills have definitely improved since whenever I made this and I'm constantly learning. So it's just cool. And this is just a very important part of my journey. So for me, even though this is far from one of my most elaborate projects or anything like that, it always holds a very special part with me because it was kind of the video that started it all that kind of got some traction going on everything. And, um, you know, obviously six years later, it's doing pretty well. Now I really got to give this ficus a haircut. It just kind of goes a little wacky, so I just got to pull off some of these excess vines. In some ways, I definitely like them growing crazy like this, but unfortunately, you kind of lose sight of the hardscape. So I think it's important to keep them trimmed up. As you're doing this, it really helps to look from different angles. And of course, look from the view that you're actually going to be looking at the terrarium. Because if you're looking from above or the back side, it's not actually what you're looking at. So you want to look at the front and just see how everything's looking. Never be afraid to go the extra mile. Or rather, I should say, never be lazy and stop yourself from going the extra mile because those fine details that you take whenever you're doing this will make all the difference. At this point, it's really all coming together, but I gotta get some of this glass cleaned off so we can really see what's going on in here. A little cotton ball dipped in water does the trick. Just get this and wipe it right over the glass and all that grime comes right off. And this not only allows you to see better into the system, but it also benefits the plants because more light can get in unobstructed and it just makes everything look better. I know that some people are still totally against doing maintenance on a terrarium, but again, I see this as an art form. I want to be able to see into the piece. And I got to say that even if you just go and clean off the glass like this, it will make a huge difference. Plus, I want people to be successful with this art form and doing a little bit of maintenance here and there definitely makes a huge difference in longevity. And look at all of this. That was all obstructing the view into the terrarium. And don't forget inside of the lid as well. At this point, I'm sure you could see where I'm going with all of this. My goal is just to fine tune things a little bit to retain the integrity of the original design. Even so, it will look better when I put all of these elements back in. And I'll actually put them in in the same order that I removed them, starting with these leaves. Now I'm actually going to trim them up first so that I can easily bury them in the substrate. Sometimes I like the look of leaf litter, but that's not really what I was trying to do with this one. So then with the tweezers, I simply stick them right down into the substrate like that, where they're hidden, but they're still a part of the system. This way, I still get all of the benefits of having leaf litter without actually seeing them. And then same deal with the moss before I add it in. I like to trim it up so I can get better disbursement. And I just put it back in spots that look a little sparse. As for the creeping fig, I'm not actually gonna put all of it back in. I'll just place a few stems in areas that I think need a little more foliage. It's looking pretty good after all of that. Just gotta add a little bit of water.
On a regular day-to-day -day basis, there would be no need to add more water, but since I had this open for a little while, it never hurts to add just a little bit more. It's a little bit of maintenance and I gotta say it's looking incredible. The oak leaf creeping fig is while well, creeping all throughout the setup, the moss is doing its thing, and the anubius is still kicking. It might not be as large as it once was, but I think it will grow back eventually. It's a very slow growing plant as it is, and especially in an environment like this, so it might not be another two years or so before it's even a decent size. All things considered, I'd say it's doing extremely well. And since it's a terrarium, it basically requires no maintenance at all, other than what you just saw, and even that isn't necessary unless you want to keep it looking pristine. I've probably done that maybe six or seven times throughout its life, but I haven't done it since probably 2020, because I know I skipped last year, I didn't do a five year update, but overall though, it's looking good, and I couldn't be happier with its progress. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is going to be my last update like this. Now I can't really get into all of the details behind that, I'm not at liberty to discuss yet, but if you recall a few videos back, I mentioned that I was working on something really big behind the scenes. Um, again, not going to talk about it, but everything's going to change here soon, and I'm very excited about it, but uh, it's going to be a lot different than it is now. You just have to wait and see what all that's going to be about. Um, it, it will make sense once I finally talk about it. There is one more thing that I wanted to mention though, and that is my shirt. You might have seen that I actually have this terrarium on the shirt. I did a continuous line drawing of it, and I think it's pretty cool. I don't know if I've really talked about it in a video, but I've been wearing it for months now. I also dropped some new merch, the Pond Life shirt featuring Wellington and a few of the goldfish, as well as a new Caledonia shirt, which features all of the new Caledonia geckos, Henry, Delilah, Cynthia. I think they're really cool and I enjoy them a lot. And in commemoration of the new designs and showing this one, I figured we should do a little coupon. Why don't we do 10% off for the rest of August? And the code, I'll leave it up on screen because I'll have to make it after the fact. And I'll leave all the details in the video description as well as the pinned comment. So if that's something that interests you and you want to support the channel in that way, definitely check it out. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this one. I got a really cool one planned for next week, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.